I'm gonna teach you how to model, texture, and render this microphone in Blender. If you can do this right, you can definitely get paid for visualizing somebody's products for e-commerce purposes. I'm first going to pull up PRF, open up this first image, and drag and drop that onto the canvas here. Now when I'm working in Blender, I can just look at this thing to see what I'm supposed to do next. I'm gonna throw this shit on my second monitor. If you don't got a second monitor, you can just put it in a corner like this. That way it's not gonna be in the way and you can always look at it as you're working. I'm not going to use a background reference because I don't really care about the proportions this time. I'm just doing this for you guys for the video. If you're doing this for a client, you're definitely gonna need some measurements or a good background reference so that you can align your model with this picture and make it realistic. Get rid of the default cube. Give me a cylinder. The default 32 vertices will do. Take this top face and lift it up. Select the bottom, control B to bevel it. I only want one segment for now like this. Take this edge loop and slide it up. After you slide it up, we're going to bevel this again, but this time with more segments. Inset this, inset it again. Take this tiny edge loop and extrude it inwards. Then lower this down. Control B to bevel with two segments in a shape of one. Delete this face. Select the edge loop here and go to face, grid fill. I'm gonna adjust the offset here so it's aligned with the world grid. And here here you can see what the bottom of the microphone looks like. First, we're gonna take these couple of faces, inset, check edge rail, select these two edge loops, go to individual origins and scale them to zero on the x-axis, then take these two and scale them to zero on the y-axis. Now select these three edge loops like this and go to loop tool space. Do the same shit with all the vertical edges like this. This is going to be the USB port. If we delete this surface and subdivide this, we're just gonna have to make some minor adjustments like this and this is gonna have a good shape. Then over here, we're going to select these four faces, inset them with I, loop tool circle, inset slightly like this then inset one more time keep this middle area selected and also add this to the selection extrude that inwards we're going to lower this down slightly select all these edge loops like this Control b to bevel them and again i want a shape of one and two segments we can also delete all the faces on the back at the bottom of this hole face grid fill here inset slightly then inset again and extrude these faces backwards the same way we did on the other side bevel the sharp edges and while we're at it we're also going to add some of the tiny details that are on the inside of this hole to do that I'm going to add a cylinder with eight vertices, scale that way down, delete the face in the back and the face at the bottom, select this edge loop face grid fill, bevel this and scale it way down again. With shift number pad seven, I'm going to go to bottom view and then give me five for orthographic projection. I'm going to place this around here somewhere, give me an array modifier, set the factor to two and scale it down to something like this, close this and give me another array modifier. This time set the factor to something like three on the Y axis. We're gonna have to do minus three instead, set the count to four. We definitely got more than four so let's try something more like eight and now we got these little things on the inside here let's lower them down a bit take this and lift it up then apply the array modifiers and once we join this with the other object they're also going to get the subdivision surface modifier so they're going to look a lot more smooth now go object shade smooth and that's good to go let's go back to the top we're going to inset this face extrude it downwards delete the interface bring me a loop cut up to here now we're going to make this little gap over here at the top of the microphone so bevel that only slightly extrude right click all s this is going to push it inwards you can delete the faces in the back because we don't need them they're completely invisible then take these edge loops control b to bevel them again give me two segments also bevel these top edge loops like this and now i'm going to show you how to make a good microphone mesh even better than this one i'm going to be the first one on youtube with a decent tutorial for how to do this Throw this over to the side, place the cursor in the middle, add a new empty cube, then with shift A add a plane, give me two loop cuts like this, select them and bevel them with control B, delete the vertices on the corners. Take these two, V to tear them, lift this up by one or two units, and lower this down by one or two units. Fill, if you want to, you can make this just a little bit wider. Just make sure you do this on both of these shapes. Extrude this out, right click G, Z, minus 0.1. Let's do minus 0.3 instead because that works better. Then take this, extrude, right click and do the same thing. You might want to bring these closer together, but make sure that these edges are aligned on the end. So we're going to select these four, scale them to zero on the Z axis, then select the lower four and scale to zero on the Z axis. Delete the faces at the ends, correct your normals and give me a subdivision surface modifier. Now play Place the 3D cursor somewhere on this end in the middle, use it as a pivot point, and edit mode scale this down by 0.5. Push it down here to this corner, now shift D to duplicate, rotate by 90 degrees, and then bring it over here to this side. Select everything, duplicate again and bring it over here, rotate by 180, select everything and merge by distance. This looks a little bit too thin, so we're going to select these, go to individual origins and scale them up to 1.5 on the Y axis, then select the others and scale those up by 1.5 on the X axis. Object shade smooth, you can always lower this down 
down further if you want to. Now, once again, we're going to scale this by 0.5 and then we're going to push it over to this corner, duplicate again, rotate by 90, bring it over here, duplicate again, rotate by 180 and bring it over here. You can do this a couple of times just so you get a nice grid. And with individual origins, I can scale up the top and bottom surfaces. This is going to make this whole thing look a lot bumpier. Now, there's two things that you can do to wrap this around the dome. Firstly, you can add a lattice, scale it up so it fits this thing, increase the U and the V resolution, but set the W resolution to one. Now add a lattice modifier to the mesh, target this lattice grid, and as we modify the vertices of the lattice, the mesh is going to get deformed according to those changes. You can now select the sides and use your proportional editing and try to turn this into some kind of circle. You can lower down the sides, but this makes it very difficult to wrap this around something properly. As you can see, we get some weird shapes because of this. We need to subdivide this way further if we want to accomplish better results. Plus, this is extremely high poly, so my solution is to bake this shit as a normal map. So get rid of the lattice modifier, get rid of this, add a plane just above this surface like this, make sure your normals are all good, add a new material to the plane, name that mesh normal map, give me a new image texture, generate a new image, we can do 1024 by 1024, we're going to name this mic mesh. Generated type has to be blank, check 32 bit float, click OK, set the color space to non-color, select this, select the mesh and shift select the plane, make sure you're in cycles, scroll down to bake, bake type gotta be normal, check selected to active, lower your samples to the lowest possible value, make sure that this node is selected and now hit bake. Mine is kind of blocky so I'm going to increase the level of subdivision here. I'm also going to reduce the margin to something like two and then we're going to bake one more time. Now we got this frame normal map, we're going to go to image save as and save that to our computer. In paint net I'm going to load up this image, copy it onto a new canvas, select all the areas in the middle, delete those, give me black underneath, this top part has to be black and white, also going to increase the brightness on that. Save this, this is going to be our color map for the mesh. We're not going to apply this texture to the dome yet. Now we're first going to finish modeling. Later, we're going to apply the textures. So first, let's add a dome. Give me a cube. Let's do three levels of subdivision. Maybe we better start with just one for now. Apply that. Delete the lower half. Scale this up. Loop tool circle on this. Extrude it downwards. Give me a subdivision surface modifier again. Select this. Scale it down to the Z axis. If you want to give this a crazier shape, you can lower this vertex down. Object shade smooth. Parent this to the body. And now let's start modeling some of the details. Right, we got a couple of buttons over here in the front, then we got some of this shit on the side here, and eventually that attaches to everything down here. We're gonna do three loop cuts like this, bring them down, scale them down on the z-axis, bevel them to turn each edge loop into three edge loops like this. Maybe it'll be better if we turn each edge loop into four edge loops like this, then we can use nine faces for each of these knobs. Merge by distance, select this, inset, make sure edge rail is checked, give me loop tools, circle, uncheck flatten, and adjust the angle so that this is not twisted. You might get some pinching on the side so maybe you gotta push this outwards a little bit like this shift D to duplicate this and right click then give me alt s to push it outwards a little bit take the surface from below and extrude it inwards bevel this edge loop extrude this outwards scale it to zero on the x-axis to flatten it scale it down like this select all these sharp edges on the front and the back Control b to bevel them that gives us one knob which might be a little bit too large if it's too large we're going to place a 3d cursor between these two edges at the top and the bottom select the entire hole but not the surrounding area also also select this knob 3d cursor as the pivot point and then scale this down to adjust the size properly there's also some bullshit going on over here this little hole so let's inset loop cut take these two inset loop tool circle extrude inwards and bevel this now we have to copy this to this lower segment so we can delete that place the cursor on this edge loop select all this shift d right click scale to minus one of the z-axis correct the normals then delete the next one cursor down here and just do the same shit one more time it looks like we messed up because these are kind of twisted I foolishly assumed that we're modeling exactly on the side, but we're not. We can fix this by just rotating this and try to align it with this surface in the back. It doesn't have to be exact as long as it doesn't look stupid. Now we got knobs. Let's make this button up here. To do that, give me another loop cut over here. Another two on the inside. Inset, loop tool, circle. Push that inwards. Bevel this. Duplicate this. Face, grid fill. Extrude out. Flatten. Bevel the edges. Now let's get over here to the side and make this. Select a surface like this. Inset. Slide this inwards 
backwards like this also on the other side slide these down and slide them up make a tiny inset area here select this and extrude it inwards it looks like there's something fancy going on here where there's a little cylinder coming out of this side to make that let's inset these faces give me loop tool circle extrude this out flatten it and i guess that's it for this shape here now what have we got here i'm thinking a circle with 12 vertices flip that sideways face grid fill delete the lower half take this and extrude it down this should probably be a little bit further out i don't know what this is but we got some kind of metal plates here so let's try a circle with 16 vertices extrude it inwards select all the faces go to select checker deselect delete faces subdivide give me a subdivision surface modifier extrude this out select all the sharp edges bevel them correct the normals and whatever that is it's there now so let's parent it extrude this down place the cursor somewhere in the middle 3d cursor to pivot point extrude this and bring it somewhere to the middle like this loop cut over here lift this up bevel this one then bevel this now mirror this over to the other side alt e extrude faces along normals to give this a little bit of thickness like this now select all the sharp edges Control b to bevel them and we can do a subdivision surface modifier again now we got to make this little wheel here i think we can do that using a circle with 64 vertices scale it down flip it sideways extrude it to turn it into a cylinder like this select check or deselect extrude while individual origins is active scale down on the y-axis subdivide two loop cuts over here scale them up on the y-axis and now we can fill this then fill in the back inset the back correct the normals and there's that then i also added some more shit down here below the mic as you can see right here now listen i can't sit here all day and model this shit if you want to learn how i model some common items like these screws down here i can put that in a future ebook update just let me know but you're also going to be able to download this model on patreon but now more or less done with modeling probably i'm gonna do something else off camera to make the stand in the back here now let's move on to the deck strip now luckily we don't gotta do a whole lot of texturing here we just need a simple dark gray background a couple of words and a couple of simple icons and maybe a logo of some sort so give me my bucket tool give me dark gray that's going to be the background color on a new layer i'm going to take my text tool give me light gray and to be able to place these correctly i'm going to take a screenshot from the front in orthographic projection like this then I'll paste that onto a new layer on top of this background and I'll make that transparent. Now I can see how I gotta place this text. So over here we gotta write mute. Then we got minus, space, space, mic, space, space, plus. We gotta copy this plus minus shit and bring it down here. And then we got a little headphone icon which we're going to make using a circle tool. So give me a circle like this which is kind of like an oval. Take half of that circle, cut and we're gonna pull that apart. Cut, paste and then push it to the side like this. Same thing on the other side. Once we got that give me another circle like this cut off the bottom and that should be placed here between the lower two knobs down here i want minus space 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 echo space 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 plus get me my brush tool i want a blue color and then i'll place a blue dot right around here somewhere i want my own logo this will be my company name so they can call me racist on reddit instead of this j i'm going to make a little note so give me a little circle over here and give me this little tail thing in the back i'm going to draw that with a line tool i'm also going to prepare an extra canvas then I'm going to drop a USB icon on that. We're going to align that with a screenshot of the bottom of the microphone. Adjustments, invert colors, and we're also going to need another pair of headphones over here under this jack. So give me a circle, cut it in half, and the headphones got to look something like this. Get rid of this, save this. We're going to name that bottom, save the first image, and we're going to name that top. And let's go over to the shading tab. Give me a new material for the body. Control T to load up a node wrangler. If you don't got your node wrangler, go to edit preferences, add-ons, type in no Node, check node wrangler and now when you select the principal node and you press ctrl t you're going to get these three nodes where you can very easily load and map textures load up the texture set the coordinate to object apply the subdivision surface modifier and we're going to have to mark some seams before we can uv unwrap this so that we can place the texture correctly so i'm going to select all the edges around these holes around the knobs ctrl e mark seam then select this and the same thing on the other side mark seam these edges at the top also these up here mark seam and then separate the bottom as well I'm going to mark an edge around here and also a vertical edge along the back. U, unwrap. And first, give me the big island, rotate it sideways, and place the UV map according to the letters which we made for in between the knobs. Let's first use this as a reference point. Then we're going to place the 2D cursor right here. Select everything else. Use a 2D cursor as a pivot point. And now, if you have to, you can scale this to adjust the size. But I think we did all right. Then give me this section at the top. Place that over the logo. We're going to make this material metallic. And now that looks beautiful. Next, let's apply the normal map to the 
dome. New material, name that normal map. Control T, open up the mic mesh, make sure it's set to non-color, plug that into normal and make sure to add a normal map node in between these two nodes. Set this to UV, then select everything and you unwrap. We're not going to cut this because if we leave it like this, we get a pattern which looks a lot like the real thing. Look at the bending on this picture right here. We're just going to increase the scale and maybe to prevent this from being a lot larger than this, we can select the faces in the middle and with proportional editing, we're going to scale those up so this area covers a larger space. Now it's going to be a little bit more evenly distributed and that looks a little bit better. Metallic, next give me another node wrangler where we're going to load up the the color texture you gotta make sure to map this with the same scale values here in the node wrangler and we're also going to use this as a specular map but the black parts in between are not shiny i'm gonna add a brightness contrast node here so i can reduce the brightness on this mesh and this looks pretty cute reducing the roughness makes this look a lot better and then we just need to make a black material for these other parts so load up this image where we got a texture for the microphone create a new material for this outer part we're going to name that metal click on base color use this eyedropper to pick up this color crank up the metallic value and copy paste the roughness from this main material now select all the parts which also need to have the same material and lastly select this part Control l link materials and give me a chrome material down here which is going to be metallic and very low roughness that's going to be for the screws down here finally give me a new material for this button up here make that white crank up transmission lower the roughness and we can also make this transparent and ev we just got to reduce the alpha set the blend mode to alpha hashed and also the shadow mode and now when we reduce the alpha this looks like a glass cover or a transparent plastic cover at least that's it the mic is textured let's figure out a way to render this in EV, I'm going to check screen space reflections. That's going to make the materials also reflect other objects. Otherwise, it only reflects light sources, and that's why EV looks unrealistic for you. Somebody told me this in the comments last time, so this is a 300 IQ trick. We're going to rotate this sideways, then press I to keyframe rotation, move the marker down the timeline, and then rotate it to this side, and once again, I keyframe rotation. Press T to set the interpolation to linear. Now, when we play this, this is slowly going to rotate. We're going to trim the animation so it ends around here somewhere control alt zero to place my camera into the front view shift a give me a plane align that with my view scale it up and throw it in the background somewhere we're going to make the background black reduce the specularity and now we got to add some light so first give me shift a give me an area light crank up the power on that area light and we're going to place that somewhere in the background like this bring it over here to the side and the material properties on your background are going to significantly affect how this reflection looks but i'm going to make this light start out back here so i'll pull it it out on keyframe zero i'm going to keyframe it right there then somewhere around here it's going to move inwards like this again keyframe it and now this is going to slowly appear in the background we can maybe add some color to this i'm gonna go with blue just because we got this blue dot over here then i'll duplicate this light bring it over to the other side of the scene delete all the keyframes in the duplicated light pull it out so it starts here keyframe location rotation then bring it inwards like this and once again keyframe location rotation now these lights are slowly going to turn on and now we just need to add some more lights for the microphone for the microphone we're going to use an area light duplicate that a couple of times so we have a whole row of lights like this we're going to make them start up here somewhere but before we animate that i'm going to create an empty cube and i'll parent those lights to that cube now we can just keyframe the cube it's going to start up here and then bring it down here somewhere keyframe for the second time linear interpolation and now these lights come into the scene slowly i'm also going to duplicate these lights and place them below the scene like this set the color of the under lights to blue or maybe we can even use a different color because it looks pretty cool with a warm color so we're also going to make those start somewhere way down here keyframe them and then bring them up at the same time as these lights come down here's what we got so far if you want to be cool you can add some smaller lights with maybe some different colors over here to the side and these lights are going to give you some cool reflections if you look very closely i also want a few of those to move over here on this side i'll make them start back here and then they're slowly going to move towards the front so the reflections come from the back of the microphone now when we play the animation, these are slowly going to appear over here from this side. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out so far, so it's time to render this. My render resolution is going to be 1080p, give me 30 FPS, file format FFmpeg, encoding MPEG4, and once I got my output folder, I'm ready to go. So go to render, hit render animation, and that's all she wrote. If you want to learn more about the techniques that you see me use in these videos, then check out my Blender ebook. I'm about to put out a 100 page update about materials and textures. Also, make sure to follow me on other platforms because I am going to get banned from YouTube because of my personality. So follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, and follow me on my new Rumble 
whole channel where I'm gonna make long videos about other topics, not just Blender, so you guys can get your shit together in other aspects of your life. But at least like this video, subscribe to the fucking channel, let me know what you wanna see next, and I'll see you in the next one.